Hello, and welcome to the Preferred Contractors Podcast, where we give you actionable steps to grow your contracting business. I'm your host, Jordan Harrison. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to uncover the mysteries of Google Ads. A lot of people have questions about them, myself included, uh, and how you should really be using Google Advertising to, you know, to advertise your contracting business. So some of the affordable and some are kind of affordable. Some require a little bit larger budget depending on your area. So we're going to kind of get into that and the strategies behind it. Uh, so today we have a Google ads specialist with us um, from Kyber Digital, Miss Maya Goldstein. Goldstein, did I say it right? Steen, yeah. Steen, I had it right the first time. Uh, she's going to join us, kind of uncover all the mysteries of Google ads. Uh, so Maya, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. So uh, let's get into Let's get let's just get into uh, your background real quick. Talk about um, kind of what led you into uh, getting into Google Ads and and I guess media buying in general. Um, but you guys think of it at different terms on the data side. So uh, talk about your background journey a little quick, and then um, yeah, we'll get into Google Ads after. Yeah. So I graduated college in 2020 into the pandemic, and I realized that I couldn't go abroad like I was planning on. So I had taken a Google ads course in school before and I was like, yeah, this couldn't be that bad, you know? So took a few other small courses, um, connected with people that were also in the industry, found a few freelance gigs and that eventually gave me enough experience and turns out it's not as easy as I thought um, to kind of get going. Yeah. Nice. Well, and it's, I, I've dabbled into Google AdWords um, before and, and well, it's not AdWords now, I guess just Google ads, but I dabbled into it before. And I just remember thinking like, there's no way I'm going to figure this, this stuff out. Like ever. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, the interface, like the, 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 um, the way it's set up from like a software point of view is way harder than actually using the ads. That's yeah. And that's funny. And I, and I'm just not good with um, I guess the language side and the research side. I'm like, well, will this work or not work? And um, and understanding how do you do how do you do the right research and 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 look at your competitor stuff and then put it in and like hey we're gonna spend some money and let's hope it works <laughs> so um, but I know there's there's a lot of data stuff behind it and that's the stuff that um, we'll definitely dive into I think I think you or my wife would be the same thing she's a data nerd um, and she'll ah. she can she can look at that stuff for hours um, and just be like oh look at this here look at that there and look at the growth here and I'm like oh my gosh anyway. <laughs> Besides the point, so let's jump right into Google Ads. This is what people want to hear about and understand. So let's go over real quick the different types of Google Ads that are out there now that you can advertise, and what's kind of the smartest way to use each one of them. Yeah. Okay. So the first that you probably hear the most often is search ads. Uh, search ads. Everyone's like, "Oh, we need search ads. We need search ads." In my opinion, unless you can drop between fifteen hundred and three thousand dollars a month on your Google search ads, I would not do Google search ads. They're expensive, they're competitive, they require a lot of research and you wanna do them right. That being said, they can also bring you amazing results. So if you have the money, if you have the time to put into finding the correct keywords and really honing your messaging in your ad, search is amazing, it really is. Uh, a cheaper one is display ads. That's mostly imagery with a few, um, I guess messages thrown in. So you have a big picture and then you have buy our house today. They're, they can be used for a lot of different ways. They can be used as um, just here it is, first view. They can also be used as retargeting. So that just means, oh, you've already been to my website. Come look at this ad. I know you're kind of interested. You just need that last push to actually call me. It's like, I kind of think, kind of, think of ads as like, tinder almost which is kind of funny uh, <laughs> but search ads are like when tinder first serves you and you get the most beautiful people and like you'll swipe right because they're gorgeous and then you look at them you're like you text them and they sometimes text you back and if you're lucky and you know how to use tinder you'll get a good date out of it but you have to actually know how to use tinder it can't just be like hi and that's it you know <laughs> where is display ads are like the people that you get after a day or two on tinder and you're like oh you know you're a bit quirky and you're pretty nice so why don't we connect and you know you kind of seen them once or twice before you probably swiped through and you're like you know what you look like a lot of other people i should connect with you that's more like display a little see, kinder and that's a fantastic analogy people will get that see that makes it better for me to understand too um because you know i 
Well, I dabbled mostly, most of my agency space spent time was on the Facebook side. And so Google mm -hmm. was always the biggest mystery to me. Um, like I, I got it, um, but that's a good explanation in terms of uh, the display side. So um, if my question is on on those top two there, and we'll, we'll kind of go into them a little bit more later, but like, as far as the search ads go, obviously the front end makes a big difference, but does the back end make a difference as well? Cause you've got, I mean, if you got no online presence, right. And you got this, you're spending three, four grand a month on, on ad spend, but it's going nowhere. Um, does it make a difference of what's on the back end? Are you talking like SEO style or are you talking like? Yeah, just like website, online presence. Like what do you have going yeah. on? Okay. So having a good website is always going to uh, be beneficial. Just because it's good though, doesn't mean it has to be complicated. As long as you have your message and your um, good, some good imagery on your website with decent SEO, that will boost your ads. That being said, if you don't have an amazing website, you can still run search ads and get a good result. They're just not going to be, it's like that back to that Tinder thing. You might get conversation going, but you're not going to land the date necessarily. You might, but probably the best opportunity you're going to get is long-term texting that's going to become awkward after a month. Yes. Well, if you have a good website, you're going to land that date. So lower conversion rate. <laughs> yeah. I got you. All right. So besides the display ads and the search ads, what are their um, Google ads that you can, that you could run? Um, so there's a whole bunch, but the other two that I tend to use more often than not is uh, performance max ads and performance max ads are basically video ads, discovery ads, search and search ads and display ads combined into one ad, all types of ads, Google offer one ad and you give it a little bit of everything. So a little bit of copy, a little bit of imagery, a little bit of video. And it then uses the algorithm to serve what works best for your people. So if you, they, if Google finds that people that are interested in your product or service respond better to videos, they're going to present more videos. But if they find videos aren't working, they might do more search or more display. It just depends on how the algorithm works. The problem that I run into with um, Performance Max ads, the biggest issue is I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to my ads. And I have to let the algorithm do a lot of work. And I don't mind that, but I also like to have more control. So it's a give and take of what I can do to optimize to ensure that people are getting the best ads, but also letting Google do what it needs to do. Right. And and how long, I know Performance Max is fairly new, is it not? Is it just recent? Yeah, the last couple of months, it's very new and it works beautifully. One, because not a lot of people are using them yet. So it's very cheap, but two, it just takes the best parts of every ad and makes them something brilliant. Nice. So can you... With the performance max, can you do? You, can you run them in conjunction with like a search display or or anything like that? Um, so, how, so, like, how do they work? How do they work together? If that makes sense. Yeah. So, if you're running a search, um, having let's say you're running a search campaign, having the performance max basically boosts it because you're. It's what it's going to do is it's going to take what you already have, all your past data, apply it to your performance max. And just say, okay, so you're running search and knows that. Maybe we're gonna push a ton of search this way because you're hitting this. It just gives it more options because now the algorithm has two different campaigns, the same goal, but a bunch of different tools to make it work. Uh, so it's it's um, really, I guess it's um, in terms of, I was trying to think of a comparison too, um, but that makes sense. So it's really, I it's probably- Tinder if you like. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of like it keeps working though. Two, it does when you have these two together it's kind of like um paid tinder so like oh. now you're getting more super likes and you're getting more options to swipe because you're now putting twice as much effort twice as much money into finding a match higher conversion on your dates right there yep. um <laughs> that's funny um so in terms of you so said we got performance max or any other ones. So what about the the map pack ads? I know that's is that where you're running ads inside the Google Map Packs? Yeah, so uh those have a bunch of different names. Uh I call them um Google My Business ads, but they're also known as location ads or location extension ads. And they're a little trickier. Um, one, Google hates them. They're never gonna get rid of them because they're so good at what they do. But Google hates them. Uh two. You have to connect your Google My Business, which should be optimized and have a lot of really good reviews to your Google ads, which in theory isn't hard, 
But again, because Google dislikes them, sometimes connecting can be difficult and then finding someone to help you connect them can also be hard. Um, I've spent many a day finding that number and I finally learned how to do it uh, without too much assistance, but it took some time. Uh, and then the last kind of tricky part about it is that they're automatically max conversions instead of max clicks or whatever other thing. Like sometimes I like to do manual CPC because it just gives me more control over low budgets. But this you have no option. It has to be max conversions, which is actually okay because the way they're set up is just like a pizza parlor near me. And the pizza parlor shows up number one because you're paying for it in the back. They're really, really good if you have low budgets and a lot of really good reviews on your Google My Business. So when you say, and this is for, I know, I understand the, the terminology for those who are listening that may not know. So when you say CPC versus max, um, right, max, sorry, max, um, <laughs> kids <laughs> are here today. Uh, we were talking before we got on, it's like the kids were, were, uh, keeping me up last night. So, um, so max clicks versus, um, or max, whatever versus CPC, what, what's the difference between those two? Yeah. So, um, to put it in simple terms, max conversions is basically saying my Google ads are going after those dates. I want a date. Go for it. You know, I'm not picky. I'm going to swipe right on everybody. I want it. Manual CPC is more like I'm putting 50% of my effort or 50 cents into finding this date. And I want to be picky. So I'm not going to swipe right on everybody because I don't have the energy or the money to do that. So I'm going to be more hands-on in my choosing. I'm not just going to say yes, 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 yes. If this, I'm finding that this avenue is spending too much money, like I'm spending too much money trying to get this contractor, it's not worth it. I don't have the money to do that. And it gives you more control for the other control freaks out there. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. And I, I know sometimes people will use in, in the marketing age, like we'll talk about CPC, cost per click, stuff like that. And they just don't understand the difference. And so um, I think it's important they understand, you know, how each one's used, why it should be used. Um, and so I appreciate it because I sometimes I don't know either. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I just produce content. Um, <laughs> I don't get into the weeds as much as, as y'all do. So, um, so, all right, so let's get into, so from your experience, um, let's get into some, some more of the Google ad stuff. If, if a contractor is getting started with Google ads, all right, let's say they do have a budget, maybe not a big one. Um, what should they start advertising with on Google? And then what should they kind of add as, as they grow? Yeah, so um, this kind of sometimes depends on what your industry is. Um, but if you have a very low budget and just want to go for it, I would either do um, Performance Max because it gives you a whole lot of options for decently cheap. Uh, that being said, you have to have some imagery, some videos, that type of thing, but still cheaper results. Or I would say um, the Google My Business local extension ads because they're really cheap. They're a bit of a pain to set up, but they're cheap and they get you good results. Um, you can also do display because display is cheap and it gives you decent results. It's just a little less reliable. Okay. And as you, as you grow, then that's when you move into the search ads. Yeah. If you don't have a budget, I wouldn't do search or what you could do. I mean, this isn't quite Google, but if you um, have enough money to do like $10 a month, $10 a day on a local extension, Google my business ad, and then you have another 400 bucks, I would put the extra 400 into Facebook and then keep the $10 a day on local extension. That way you're kind of getting a search result. It's just Facebook. Okay. Well, I didn't think about that too. And I guess we, we could talk about the, how you can use Google and Facebook interchangeably. Cause I know people hear about the Facebook pixel on your website and all that stuff. Um, and, uh, and you know, how it works and how it tracks people uh, across the platforms. Super right? cool. Yeah, I know. Nerdy stuff. But there's something super cool. If yeah. you um, get your Facebook pixel and you have a number and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. You can now put the Facebook pixel in the Google tag manager. Yeah, which is Google Tag Manager. Um, it's gotten actually simpler because Google Tag Manager, just for like background here, um, is basically a connector. It connects your Google ads to your website so they can talk to each other and you get more accurate results. It's kind of like a, a hack so you don't have to do Google Analytics because Google Analytics can be complicated. Mm -hmm. 
but and so many people were kvetching about not being able to use their pixel with Google. So Google's like, okay, time to step up to the plate. So they got it connected. It was wonderful. It's great. Oh, nice. So, and obviously that's going to help conversions and, and everything else in tracking. Absolutely. You can actually see where things are going through now. It's great. Oh, that's neat. See, this is where I, I probably should have done like a screen share on this one. Although people are listening on audio, but um, we may have to do like a nerdy screen share, like, and put this into our community group uh, for people to see this stuff because um, uh, for contractors, they need to be on Google period. Like it doesn't matter. Like you hear a lot about the Facebook ads and stuff. And yes, those do work if you do them the right way. Um, but at the end of the day, like Google's where it's at um, and they need mm -hmm. to understand how it works. Oh, absolutely. Being able to connect the two and really have a full encompassing like ad campaign on different levels is amazing now. Mm -hmm. So much easier than it was like even six months ago. Nice. And are you, and I'll come back to go to the keyword research minute um, on the performance max campaign. Are you finding it easier to, I know, I know you don't get the control side, but you're finding it, it's working. Uh, it was a, a nice upgrade or is it just kind of a still a pain in the butt? I mean, it's always a pain in the butt, but it is, you don't need to have as much keyword research to succeed with performance max. It's more about audience. So it's a little easier for like an everyday person to be like, I know that my people are new homeowners and I know that they're going to be doing DIY stuff. And I know they're gonna be doing um, landscaping and X, Y, and Z. So it, it's more to do more, it gives you more audience control. So you don't have to do as much keyword work. Well, okay, it's funny you say that. It sounds like Facebook. Or ads it and does, ads. doesn't it? It's kind of like Facebook. Yeah, like I got, I, I think interest, you know, automatically I'm thinking, all right, well, you, you're running a lot of times on Facebook, you're running interest or audience and, and it seems more mm -hmm. audience targeted than keyword. Um, so that's interesting. I didn't even think about that. So it's probably, it's probably just a, that's a sexy move by Google to, to combine the two. Like, well, uh, and what's, it's kind of like display uses audience too, but it's not as in depth as Facebook. So this is a little more nitpicky. It's very interesting. Oh, I wonder from like a, just like a total side thing. I wonder from a data privacy, how that's going to work in the future, but that's neither here nor there really. Uh, the, it, I guess for the privacy stuff, you could go down to probably 10 podcasts on that, but um, it's, <laughs> it's interesting how there's always a workaround like ready like that um, for people to get access to your data. At this point, you're almost like, well, how do you just not give in? Um, it's hard not okay. to. Like at my phone number, I get called, I don't know how many times a day for, uh, Google my business listings. Are you going to sell your house? And I'm like, how did you give them a number? Like I, in at this point in time, I mean, I know how they got my number because I know how they yeah. scrape phone numbers, but um, you know, but you're just in there going like, it's what point in time do you, do you get that off? Do, do you, can you keep your um, stuff safe? Unless if you live in a farm. Um, far, far away. Far, far away with, with no, uh, no electronics. So. Well, cool. So let's talk about keyword research. The nerd, this is this is the stuff I actually want to dig into a little bit more because um, yeah, I get the I, I know the gist of of how you start to re, how people start to research out for Google, but like just deciding you know what these are the ones we're going to target these are going to be the best ones. So before running a campaign, um, how do you go about starting a keyword research for a particular market? There are so many different ways. Um, I'm going to go over the free way because I'm going to assume no one really wants to shell out like eighty bucks a month to get the tools that would give them like more than they need. Um, so if you go into Google on the upper right, right hand corner, there's a little wrench. And if you press the wrench, the left side of the wrench expanded thing is something called keyword planner. And that is where I would start. Um, so because what it does is you put in, let's say your website, like just the link to your website, and then words that you know, are relevant. So if you're a plumber, you know things like um, flooding or um, toilet repair or clogged drain, things like that are gonna be relevant because that's the services you do. You can break it down by service. If you're um, trying to think like what other things you could do if you're like a, like a roof like, person. Yeah, roofers or HVAC. So yeah, HVAC, you got, you know, broken AC, um, mm -hmm. AC not blowing cold air, things like that. Exactly. So then you put those words, I think you get up to 10 and you just, I would do between like five and eight. Um, and then you press enter. And what it's gonna do is based on your website, based on your keywords that you gave it, generate a whole bunch of keywords for you. 
and it's going to give you data on the ones that you gave it. So if you look at the top, it's going to have, okay, here are the keywords you gave us. Here's how many people look at them per month. Here's how many people in your area are connecting with them. And here's how much money on average it takes to score high on this keyword. And it's going to do that for all the keywords that you presented it. And then when you go past that, so we talked looked at all the keywords that we gave it. Now we're looking at the keywords it generated. It's going to give you the same data as before with brand new keywords. And for people with a low budget, what I would suggest doing is instead of going for the super high keywords, like, um, so not plumber near me, because I would always do that one, just keep that going. But maybe like, um, maybe Navian water heaters, maybe there are like 300 vendors for Navian water heaters, and you're one of them, but you don't have a budget to really compete with these guys. That's totally cool. Don't go for the Navian water heater because that's high and expensive. Go for a mid-level word that are going to be less competitive, less bidding on. You're still going to show up where you want, but you're not going to be paying the premium prices to get there. Nice. See, and I, and I would just never, I don't know, it, it, the, the, the process behind it is what I didn't know how you did it, but now I know. So now I'm going to go do some research on my own. Um, oh, yeah. If you ever feel like you're getting really into it, you can go to um, something called a Hrefs, a a H R E F S or S E M Rush. You get like a two week free trial, and they are fantastic to really break down your keywords. Yeah, don't pay for it because it's expensive. <laughs> Not unless you plan yes. on running a lot of Google Ads. Yeah, don't get don't put yourself in that position. But if you want to do the free trial for a minute or two, definitely worth it. Yes, the nerd on it. Cool. Um, so once we got campaign trial and we've done our keyword research, so what, what are you tracking? Like what, what are the most important metrics inside the Google campaigns that uh, contractors should know? At least they should know. So if they have a marketing company they're working with, what metrics do they need to know and understand? Um, so when they're actually having that conversation and reviewing the data, um, they, know, they know what's up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So there's a couple of things I would do. One, I would make sure that your company sets up conversions for you and connects them to your website, um, which sounds confusing, but it's basically saying, I wanna track phone calls I'm getting from my ads, phone calls I'm getting from my website and form fills that I'm getting from my website. That way we can track where they come from and it'll be more accurate. The rest of your data will be more accurate because of it. And for your advertiser, it's super easy to set up. You connect to Google Tag Manager, connect it to your website, you're done. You can sit them and forget them and your data will be better. Because that way, one of the most important things everyone always asks, which personally, I don't think is as important, but I'm not the person looking for them, is conversions. Everyone wants to know what their conversions are. But I could say you have 10 conversions and you have no idea what that means. It's like, oh, you have 10 conversions. Okay, but were they calls? Were they forms? Were they someone just pressing, I wanna learn more? Like, what, what does a conversion mean? So take the time in the beginning, define your conversions, that way, when you say, I want to know what my conversions are, they can break them down and say, you got two form fills, you got three calls, you got five calls directly from the ad, you got five calls from your website that came from advertising. It's more accurate data, but more importantly, you'll get better quality calls. Ah, uh, see, and I never thought about breaking it down into where they came from and, and considering that a conversion. Um, I would just think anything that converted into a phone call and then you track, you know, how many of those converted into a sale or whatever. Um, but but well, for some, for some, it works like that because if you're like, um, I don't know if, if you're an HVAC person or, or locksmith and you, you're looking for those calls, that's all you want. Knowing whether they came from ads or whether they came from your website doesn't truly matter for you. But if you're a roof renovator and someone filled out a form because they weren't ready to call, but they want more information. That is really good to know because that's going to change your messaging when you call them or you email them. Oh, uh, that's true. And I didn't think about that either. Cause I, you know, if you're an emergency service, like locksmith, cause nobody just calls a locksmith when they're like, yeah, I'll get around to getting my door unlocked. Yeah, um, I don't need to get back to the car. Yeah. They're just like, I don't care. Just as long as I get the phone call. Cause I know what they want. They need me to break into something and get them out. Uh, <laughs> versus I need to go spend 15 grand on a new AC unit, or I got to spend, you know, 20 grand on a new roof. So uh, no, that makes sense. And um, the best part about that too, is it allows you to get more of their data because they're going to be sending an email to you. And if you're not monitoring that, you're not going to know. And then once you have their email, you can put them through all types of marketing funnels because you now have very valuable information. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And that's when you start, you know, creeping in the Facebook ads and you start, you know, you start adding different to it, even YouTube ads at, at that. YouTube, uh, or you could just basically remarket, be like, here's my audience that I want to hit because I've gotten their emails. I want them to get my remarketing ads because they've already seen my page. They've already seen my search. Come back to me, you know? Yeah. Baby, come back. <laughs> Uh, we, get to, we get to sing on the podcast. Um, no, that's, and that's awesome. And I think that they, they, people need that breakdown, need to understand. And I think on the back end too, like on, on the contractor side too, like they've got to understand when, like what's, what's, they can't always blame the marketing on the front end, right? Like if you're bringing in the good calls and stuff, they've got to understand that, all right, these are good calls. If I'm not converting them, what am I doing on my back end? What's happening in my sales process? Did my, whoever's, am I answering the phone on time? Um, I know that kills Google, right? If you're somebody calls you and you don't pick up the phone, Google's like, hey, guess what? We're not going to send you somebody again because you didn't pick up the phone. Um, so you're not reliable. Um, and so Google I think, yeah, and I think that's how smart Google is. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't okay. think it's a search engine. I just think it's a data hub. That's all it is. It is because you're, the, uh, for people like us, especially the marketing people, but also just contractors, people on Google are the product and we're trying to buy them. So if they're the product and the, the contractors in general are the people buying it, you want to buy the great, the best quality of product you can buy. You wouldn't buy a shoddy roof. So how are you going to make sure that you get the best quality? Make sure you're properly tracking your conversions. Yeah, that's true. So but also look at click through rate, click through rate and impressions and clicks. Those are probably the other two. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't put like all of my effort into looking at those, but if you're having low clicks, but high click through rate, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Cause okay, maybe you only got 10 clicks, but they really like interacted. They were really interested. And most of them probably converted because you have a high click through rate. Yeah. And I think some people think, well, if I'm on Google, that means that you're going to be, I'm going to be brought jobs. People are ready to buy now. I'm like, yeah, but you still have to sell them. You know? well, plus some people are only in the research phase. They're trying to figure out what they want. So not only do you have to have good ads, but you have to really be selling yourself. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny you say that. We talk, um, I was working last night on, uh, on on a few things for me personally, my business. And and it was, I'm working on the discovering who's my ideal customer and then learning what kind of content am I going to create around what phase they're in in the buyer's journey. Right. And people yeah. don't understand that you have to have content either on your, on your website or on your social media. Like if they're in that research phase and they're in that mode of, I just need to learn more and then understanding how you go into either retarget, like you said, um, or how you're going to continue to put yourself in front of them, keep top of mind when they're ready to buy um, then, you know, they, who they're going to, they're going to you. Right. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. So last question here I'm going to dive into because I know we're reaching a 30 minute mark. Um, so what's kind of the number one factor in your experience that causes Google campaigns to either underperform or just completely flop? Uh, there are two things that consistently drive me bonkers when I work with people who haven't really experienced Google. And it's one of those things that, especially if I'm on a freelance basis, I will sit down in the beginning and say, they for this to work, you have to promise me these two things. Uh, and they both have to do with consistency. Uh, one, don't be uh, changing your ads and your stuff every 10 minutes. It's one thing to say, maybe this week I want to add a special to my ad. That's small. That's an easy change. But if every week you're saying, I'm not getting conversions, I'm going to turn this off and turn this on and change all my keywords and completely redo my ads every week, your ads are going to stick in uh, learning mode forever. And they're never going to show you what you want. And you're going to yell at your marketing person. You're going to say, how dare they? They're not doing, you're not doing your job. And they're going to say, well, let's leave them alone for two weeks. Let them grow a little bit, give them some TLC from afar and see what happens. And nine times out of 10, you're going to see amazing results. Once you leave them alone, that's not to say, you shouldn't monitor them. You shouldn't make sure you make sure they're spending when they're supposed to and give them tweaks to optimize. But Google ads do best when you give them the best creative stuff you can give them, the best ad copy, the best keywords, everything the best you can do and let them grow. Cause they, they're like plants. They really don't want you to bug them too much in the beginning. Yep. And then, not. yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Second part, yeah. Yeah, the second part is don't mess with the budget too much. Commit yourself to a budget and let it stay for a little bit. 
if after two months you can't afford it anymore, at least you gave it two months and they're growing and they're learning. But if you're changing the budget every two days, it's also not going to work. And, and, and I want to touch on this real quick before we go. Um, you're talking about the learning phase part. Now, I know Facebook has this and YouTube as well. There is a learning phase that people don't understand that if you have no data, right, you have no data on your pixel, it's never worked, it's never fired off. Um, they don't understand that there's, it's not the marketer, it's the algorithm itself. So talk a little bit really quick about how, let's talk Google and Facebook for a moment, because those are kind of the two main platforms. Yeah. How long does it really take to kind of not necessarily fully optimize? Obviously it gets better over time. Um, but what's, what's kind of the, the timeline window where you see like, okay, it's, it, we're out of learning mode. We're into targeting the right people mode. Yeah. So for Google, I try to give it two weeks, maybe three, depending on how big, like if you have, um, so don't do this. This is a bad setup, but if you have like 16 different ad groups with four ads per group and a high budget, it's going to take longer to learn, especially when it's spread, uh, spread thin. If you have a lot of ads and a little budget, it's going to take twice as long to learn for both Facebook and Google. If you have one ad group, one ad and a lower budget, it's going to take less time for it to learn because it's putting all those resources to that one bit. Um, so I would give it two weeks for uh, Google. Facebook, it does depend on how optimized you are to begin with. Um, What's really cool about Facebook, you already know this, but you can put in multiple headlines, multiple descriptions, multiple pictures. You can do all of that. If you do all of that in one ad and put all your money towards it, Facebook's going to optimize based on what copy and image works best. And you're saving yourself budget because if you have a small budget, that's going to do a whole lot better that setup than having three ads because it's going to have to put $15 over three ads. Right. I got it. Cool. Awesome. Um, no, shoot. Talk about some great information. There's so many other things you could dive into in terms of like just ad performance and uh, breaking down like where to start, uh, what kind of ads to do, ad copy. Um, we could be here for hours uh, really nerding great. out on this stuff. This stuff's fun. It's just fun for me because I'm a big nerd. Um, not as much on the data stuff, but just learning and understanding how this stuff works is, uh, is fun for me. But no, Maya, I really appreciate you taking the time today, hopping on giving us all the golden nuggets, uh, especially when it comes to Google, because some people just don't, it's hard to understand. It really is. And you need somebody that's focused on it and is, is a pro at it. So we appreciate you again for, for hopping on. Um, and if you want to work um, with, well, you won't work directly with Maya, but obviously if you want to work and have Maya running your ads, um, you can always go to kyberdigital.com, uh, fill out one of their form fields. They'll be tracking you probably. Uh, and uh yeah, and if you're in the group, you can obviously reach out to me. I can get you in touch with uh, Jay or Greg um, and at least go over like go over your options and things that will work best for your company. So yeah, Maya, thank you again. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. This would be a bit creepy, but I definitely see some of the stuff on the group because I have access to it. Oh, so yeah. hi, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you guys again for listening to Preferred Contractors podcast. Uh, if you haven't already, hop into our Preferred Contractors community group. Uh, go into Facebook, search groups. It's preferred.contractors. Should be the first one that pops up when you search for it. We have everything in there. It's all free content uh, based around, obviously, marketing first, business development, uh, sales, uh, brand, uh, even things like Google AdWords, stuff like that. We have all that stuff in there that's free for you to learn and understand. So when you're ready to make the jump and leap, uh, into hiring a marketing company or start growing. Uh, all that stuff's in there. It's free as well as content creation, which is my forte there, which is hugely important. That's another episode in itself. So hop into that group, check it out. Uh, if you want to work with Maya and Kyber Digital's team, uh, reach out to me, kyberdigital.com, get in touch with them and we'll make it happen. So thank you guys again for listening. Until next time.